Hey there, I'm Andrew, and welcome to this first video in this series. I don't know how many videos there's going to be, it depends how things go. So today I am going to talk about my motion luba. But unlike the other hundreds of videos that are out there on YouTube, I'm not going to talk about the lawnmower. The mower does a great job. I've had mine since early summer. Uh, it's in hibernation right now. Does a great job mowing the grass. Sure, there's some issues with it. But I'm not going to create another video that's going to add to the hundreds that are already out there. Nope. I wish to talk about the RTK or the base station or the reference station or whatever you want to call it. I'm talking about this thing. Yep, that's the thing that you've mounted on a pole somewhere. You've strived to get it as high as possible and you never touch it again because you don't want to have to go remap everything. Um, yep, I'm really interested in this. I want to dig in some more. I took a look at the uh, teardown video that was done by uh, Spencer Owen and there's some really interesting bits in there and I want to find out more about it. In addition, I did some uh, research already and I found the FCC filings. That also gave me some additional information. So, in this first video, my plan is to really pull together what we already know. Um, the next video, I'll uh, pull out an RTK. I've managed to get hold of one off of eBay for not too much money. So I'm going to do a teardown um, and we'll take it from there. I'd like to try and extend the capabilities of the RTK. I'd like to add some functionality to it. I'd like to try and use it for other means. That's my goal. And those are the kind of things I'd like to show in this video series. Whether that's going to be possible or not, I don't know. We'll see where we go. But so, yeah, in this video, I want to really talk about what we know about the RTK already. Um, I'm not going to uh, go into details too much about how GNS, GNSS works, um, how GPS works, how RTK works. Um, I will start though, well, if you want to see, there's a, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube actually that, that cover that in pretty good detail already. Uh, there is one that I will link in the description by Arju Simple. I think it's accurate, easy to understand, and kind of helps cover the the Luba RTK reference station um, scenario. So it gives you a little bit more of the knowledge that might help you understand why the importance of the reference station, um, etc., etc. So. With that, let's just uh, level set on what we're going to call this thing. You can call it the RTK, you can call it the base station, you can call it the reference station. I'm not here to debate what's the right name. I'm, I will refer to it as the base station. Okay, so from here on in, when I'm talking about the base station, I'm talking about that, that white plastic funny looking thing that supposedly leaks and has an antenna sticking out the bottom that you've mounted up on a pole. The rover in a GNSS RTK um, solution, the rover is the bit that moves. So in our case, the rover is the luba. Um, we will refer to the rovers at some point, uh, depending on what solutions we come up with. But for now, in our solution that Momotion has given us, the rover is the luba. It's the device that moves that we want to precisely know its location. So on the left here, we have the, uh, the base station. And then the other component, as I mentioned, is the luba mower, which we'll refer to uh, for now as the rover. Each of these devices have a GNSS uh, capability, so that would be a receiver, to receive the signals from the various satellites um, within the constellations. So GNSS is the, the term used, so it's Global um, Navigation Satellite System. It is the term used to define the, the collection of different global navigation systems that exist. The original one obviously was GPS provided by the US and now other 
nations have added to those uh, systems. So now GNSS refers to multiple systems and where we have our receivers in the, the base station and a receiver in the rover or our Luba, both of those referred to as GNSS receivers because they use more than just the GPS satellites. Uh, so we have, yeah, so we have the base station uh, on the left here and then we have the rover um, and the base station and the rover also talk to each other. So there has to be some communication capability between those two components and this is what leads to the RTK uh, capability. Again, go check out the bunch of videos on YouTube. Link in the description for the uh, for the one that I mentioned from Arju Simple. Some really, really more detailed but useful information there to help you understand how this works. And okay, so the main components of the base station are firstly the power supply. Secondly, there is a microcontroller. Thirdly, there is the GNSS RTK component, which includes both the the device itself, um, the compute the computational power, and then the antenna. And then we have the lower um, transceiver. Uh, this is the RF device that communicates with the rover. Uh, that includes the device itself, as well as the associated antenna. And then lastly, we have the main circuit board. So the main circuit board has all of these components um, coupled together through the main circuit board. Also includes a USB-C port and a uh, connection to the LEDs. Now again, this is just what we know so far uh, based on, like I said, the FCC filings and the other uh, sources of information out there. So let's, uh, let's drill down again what we know further about each of these uh, components. So first, the power supply. Uh, pretty simple, really. Uh, the power supply is actually an auto-switching power supply. Uh, so I guess they use the same power supply in multiple markets. It supports an input uh, voltage of 110 volts to 240 volts. Uh, the, obviously the version I have has a uh, North American plug on it and it's uh, used with 110 volts, um, but it is auto switching. The output voltage is 12 volts DC at two amps. Um, I'd also be interested to see what the power draw is on the device so that's probably something we can take a, a look at as well uh, and then the connector as uh, shown in the photo on the right here is uh, obviously a two pin connector it's um, similar to an automobile type connector so it is actually um, somewhat watertight as well so the microcontroller the microcontroller is the the main processor within the uh, the base station that houses the code um, or the microcode that's been implemented by Momotion. So yes, Momotion have created this solution uh, in connecting commercially available off-the-shelf components together. But the way that they then couple it together and control all of that is with the microcontroller. And they've written code that they've compiled and then um, uploaded as firmware onto the, the microcontroller itself. Um, so as I said, it connects all the components together. Um, it's talked to through the USB-C. So my guess, and I think it's a reasonable assumption based on what I've seen online, is that the USB-C port connects to uh, through a UART um, chip into the microcontroller itself. So any um, communication, any console output or any console input to the microcontroller would be through USB-C port. Uh, similarly, I've seen that there is a uh, Windows application that you can download uh, that Momotion provide that enable you to upload firmware um, and potentially other things. Again, I've not looked at this yet that communicates through the USB-C port with the microcontroller itself. Um, the, interestingly enough, the, the, the base station, from what we can see, doesn't provide any connectivity using Bluetooth LOE or so Bluetooth Low Energy <coughs> or Wi-Fi. Um, the ESP32 
uh, microcontroller, which I believe is in the, the Luba, has on board Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE capabilities. Um, I don't know which microcontroller yet. Um, I've tried to look at some of the photos online. I don't know which microcontroller yet is in the um, in the base station. From what I can see in the photos, it has a total of uh, 48 pins, 12 on each side. Um, that could be an ESP32. Again, this is going to be one of the things that we'll look to discover in the next episode when we crack open the, the base station and take a look. So next up we have the GNSS receiver. This is the RTK uh, component and this really is the most critical component. This is commercially off the shelf provided by a company called Unicore. The model is UM960 and here you have the support information for all of the different GNSS uh, constellations that it supports. It's a very versatile solution. It's actually a great choice by uh, by Bemotion. Now, what's interesting is that you know lots of uh, people on Reddit and on the forums, you know, speculate whether Bemotion could make changes to improve the RTK performance or the positioning performance or the constellations or satellites that it's going to use. The reality is that. Mamotion have paired the Unicore UM960 with a particular antenna, which we'll come on to next, and they have no real control over the performance of that solution. Yeah, they could choose a different set of vendors and a different set of components and come up with a different performance characteristic, but there's nothing that, from a code perspective, that Mamotion right now could really do to improve the performance of this chip. They're not the ones that implemented this chip. They chose a commercial off the shelf component, which was the right thing to do. Um, the firmware for this could potentially be upgraded. So if the, uh, if the manufacturer Unicore issue um, new additional capabilities or fl fix bugs in this, then there is, I believe, the potential to upgrade uh, the firmware on it. Um, but other than that, really the the performance of the GNSS RTK capabilities are down to this particular vendor and the chip that's provided. I think it's, from what I can see in my research, is it was a really good choice. Um, the uh, A few things to note about this as well. Based on the uh, documentation, the product documentation, uh, which by the way, I'll leave a link to it uh, in the description so you can take a read yourself. Um, it has three um, uh, three RXTX uh, combinations, so it's able to communicate with three separate communication uh, three separate components using serial communications. What I'm interested in when we open this up is to see specifically what it is communicating with. I know for sure that um, you know the output from this chip, the RTK. Uh, data from this chip is communicated with the Roba, being the Luba. And what I'd like to know is, does it send that data first to the microcontroller, and then the microcontroller send that out over RF to the Roba, or does it actually communicate directly with the RF chip, which we'll come on to in a minute? Does it communicate directly and not actually send it via the the microcontroller? I would believe that this does also communicate directly with the microcontroller because the microcontroller controls the LEDs. I imagine the microcontroller would have to control the LEDs, which show the status. So, so yes, information from this chip will go to the microcontroller. But I, like I said, I'm interested in if this chip communicates as well directly with the RF component to send the satellite uh, data um, to the uh, to the rover to the Luba. The other thing to note is that there's actually a piece of software uh, that you can install on a PC and communicate with this chip to get uh, additional information, like the satellite information. Um, you can also issue commands if you communicate with this chip over a serial port, 
uh, you can issue commands for the particular mode that it runs in. So obviously when the base station starts up, the microcontroller sends instructions to this chip to tell it which mode to run in. Um, there are some things I'd like to see if we can do as well, like actually set the, the accurate location for this chip using a serial command. Um, if there is a way to accurately set the location of this, um, of this base station, it would actually mean we would end up with a substantially more accurate location solution as well. But that's, uh, that's hopefully a topic for another video. So the GNSS antenna, uh, this is pretty interesting actually. It's made by a manufacturer called Harkson and the model based on the pictures that I found online is HS, uh, sorry, HXCSX194A. Um, however, with the research I've done, I've not actually been able to find any information anyway. It's not listed on the manufacturer's website. They have the HX CSX range, uh, like the 100A, and they have some others, but nowhere can I actually find this a uh, reference to this antenna. If you have found any reference or if you have any more information about this antenna, I'd love to know, post uh, in the comments, uh, because we'd like to find out a little bit more. Uh, what we do see is that obviously it's connected to uh, from the GNSS receiver. Um, so the UM960 connects to it. Now, what is also interesting is that there is a connection to it uh, from the uh, lower uh, module, which we're going to touch on in a second. And then from that, it connects to the actual antenna for lower, which is the antenna that sticks out below the uh, the base station. So I'm a little bit confused. I don't know if that's a, an amplifier for the lower, um, I'm not quite sure. So that I, I'd like to try and find out more about specifically this antenna. Again, the HXCSX194A. Um, if you have any info, please share. Okay, so the lower transceiver or long range transceiver is the RF component within the base station. This is manufactured by uh, eBite. Uh, the model number is E22900T22S. I've included a link to the product page uh, in the description in this video, as well as provided a link to download the PDF which has the product specification. So the E22 is a new generation of lower wireless module. It's based on the SX1262 RF chip wireless serial port module UART. Um, with a variety of transmission modes. So this, uh, this chip, the, again commercially available off the shelf chip, is in both the base station as well as the Luba itself and enables the Luba to communicate, or rather enables the base station to communicate with the Luba. The, uh, the chip has the ability to operate in different modes uh, fixed transmission or broadcast transmission. In broadcast transmission, it's able to broadcast the data to multiple receivers. So in that case, it would be like having multiple lubers operating off of the same base station. Um, in the fixed transmission mode, it would be just transmitting data to a, uh, a single device um in this case or a single receiver um so i'm i i'm not sure which mode it operates in i have read somewhere that someone had two lubers running off of the same uh, base station and if that's the case it would be operating in broadcast mode so remains to be seen which mode it runs in the actual data though that the base station is transmitting is the differential correction signal so this is the GNSS uh, information that is passed over this lower connection, this RF connection, and it is really what builds up the, the precision capabilities of the RTK solution. This data is what is used by the LUBA to increase the overall precision. So the, uh, the lower chip has uh, basically 
uh, operating in either a transmitter mode or a receiver mode. Um, in the transmitter mode, it will receive the data in over a serial um, connection. And again, I'd like to find out if that's coming from directly from the GNSS chip or if that's coming from the microcontroller. And then obviously in the in the Luba case um, or the Rover case, then it'd be operating as a receiver and it takes that data and obviously then passes it into the GNSS uh, RTK module that's in the Luba itself. So just as another point on the label of your base station. So if you look on the label that is attached to the base station, it has a lower ID, which is a uh, a four digit number followed by a point followed by a two digit number followed by a point followed by a single digit followed by a point followed by two digits these uh, or this lower ID is what you put into your Luba app when you set up your Luba so that it can talk to the base station in reality it's so that it can listen on the for the right ID and the right channel for the data that is being sent by the base station. Now, a little bit of a spoiler alert, I've actually ordered a USB-C lower module with this same chipset, but it's, it's within a USB-C type um, form factor. And my goal is to be able to use that to be able to try and receive the data that the base station is sending um, and again hoping to accomplish that and have that in a future video all right so last but by no means least we have the main circuit board obviously this main circuit board was designed and implemented by Momotion and it's responsible for connecting all of the components together the uh, there's not much I can say about it for now uh, in Spencer Owen's great video, he does actually show a little bit of the board, but until we open it up and actually look at the components and, and trace what's connected to what, there's not much really I can definitively say about it. Uh, to Spencer Owen's point, it does look like there's a UART or um, at least one or two UART connections on there. That would be great if that is connected to the GNS, GNSS module because we'll be able to play around with that uh, chip a little bit. Um, so before uh, really we can do much else or say much else about the main circuit board, we'd have to crack it open and, uh, and take a deeper dive. So I hope you've liked this uh, initial video in this series and you've found the content informative. Uh, hopefully as we go through, we can get deeper into the base station and some possible projects that we can use it for or extend the capabilities with. Uh, if this is something that you're interested in, uh, hit that like button, subscribe so you can get notifications when I post the next video. Also, if you've got any suggestions of possible projects that we can do to extend the base station, then it would be interesting to hear uh, from you about that. Also, if there's any additional information that you may have about some of these components in the base station, uh, in particular the GNSS antenna where I couldn't find that model number listed online, I'd really like to hear from you. So uh, post those comments uh, in the video. Um, otherwise, we'll catch you soon.